Hello guys, welcome to a new desk, and welcome to today's video. It is a review of the LEGO Star Wars 75312 Boba Fett's Starship set, or more commonly known as the Slave 1. This set is for ages 9 and up, has two minifigures, and the Mandalorian box art, because this Slave 1 is from the Mandalorian. The two minifigures are Boba Fett and the Mandalorian. Mandalorian in his Beskar armour. And on the top there's one to one scale of Boba Fett and some Boba Fett starship in different languages. Uh, on the side of the box, Lego successfully brought back the side of the box uh, with the Slave 1. And then on the back it shows off all the features which we will get to in this review. Uh, so, yeah, that's the box. The instructions has the QR code on the front of the instructions, which is not as displayed as other um, sets, set instructions. It's just a square on the front, but either way, it's cool. And, yeah, on the back it's just got the robot thing and then yeah it's regular instructions as you would expect uh, so yeah let's get on with the minifigures I should say before I properly start this review that I have only watched the first episode of the first season of The Mandalorian so I don't know if any of this is accurate I have seen some backlash with the sand green colour on the helmet and jetpack um, and it's Fair enough, because it's not the same colour as the torso. And I think that's what the backlash is. Um, Boba Fett does have a rangefinder, which you can slot down. And he does have one of these, which I don't know if he actually ever wears in anything. But if you you can replace that with the... Um, you can replace the rangefinder with that. And yeah. The footprinting is really nice. I love footprinting on Lego figures. It's really cool. I love the leg print and he has fairly simple arm printing. If you take off his helmet like this, he has an exclusive head print, which looks really nice. I really like it. It's a lot more of an accurate colour because Boba Fett's a clone of Jango Fett. And on the back, he does have some markings. It's just like scars or something like that. This figure is absolutely amazing, and I really like it. Next up, we have the Mandalorian in Beskar armor. There are like two or three released this summer. It's the same as um, what we got in January, except the weapons is just a spear and a little pistol. He has a regular black head underneath and an actually really great back print. He also has a stiff cape, which is kind of what LEGO have been getting back into doing these days. I don't mind it. Don't know if other people mind it. I don't mind it. So this is the Slave 1. It's fairly small. As you can see, my hands can just like, cover it. Um, but that's nothing bad. I didn't mention, but in this set as well, it comes with a Gamorrean frozen in carbonite, which we can put inside the Slave 1 if we lift up this cargo hold, I guess. We can just slide him on in, and this can close up and you can not even see it. It's really great, and I love it a lot. On the side, there are some weapons which cannot turn 360 degrees, they can turn like 150, 160 degrees, but I prefer to keep them at this angle here because that's just what I, what I would prefer. On the front of this set is some stickers on some grey 2x4 pieces and this looks, I mean the effect is really good, except the sticker's not printed. So there are going to be gaps in between this green piece and the stickered pieces. But all the same, it's really cool. Um, there are stud shooters, which um, if you 
press on the little grey thing here, will fire, just like normal stud shooters, one and two. They are easily lost, but, I mean, and that can be quite a bit annoying, but it's fine. This is this is actually a really good feature. I love stud shooters actually quite a lot. As you may have noticed, if if you lift it, lift up the slave one with the wings facing down, the wings do turn with the set, which is a really good feature. Which would have been um, not very good if. Lego had missed out on it this time, this time round, because it's been around since I want to say 2000 when it when the first Slave One was released. I love the green pieces that they use. You can open up the cockpit, and there is a control panel on the inside, but Boba Fett sits there, so we can't get to it. You can't even put him on the studs down there because of because of his arms. But you can put him on here with the rangefinder all the way down, pretty much on his neck, so that he can actually fit in there. And yeah, he can't, as I said, he can't use or see the control panel, but it's really nice and really cool. I love the grooving on the wings, wings as well. This set is jam-packed with stickers to create a lot more detail, And we're, but we're not done from a design point of view. The back actually looks really good. Um, there's a green plate here which I'll get to later um, and the, I love the engines it's just there's the really cool design and I really like it now you may be wondering what this is up here it's actually a handle um, like I wouldn't normally put handles on on this small of a set it might just be that it was so well received on the 2019 version that they just had to put it in this this one and I don't blame them for it because there's not a lot of space you can hold it that's not here and it's very impractical to hold it there so yeah I really like this handle and it's a great way to just swoosh around your Lego set you can fit Boba Fett and his weapon and his little that thing, whatever it is, in the cockpit, just put them in the bottom before you put him in, and he fits in. So, this set does come with a little, well, I guess it looks like, you know one of those things that resistance um, base workers pull along storage things on? It looks like that, because uh, you can have... And it, but with a ladder on and stuff. So you can put a figure in here and have him control the the um, thing with the handlebars and have him stand in there. It looks fine and, and great. Um, you might be wondering why there's this random old ladder there and the reason that there's a ladder there involves this slave one. That's where this comes it basically, if you just slot the lad slot the slave one there and put the ladder underneath the green thing, the green it just it works as a stand. What I want to do though is that where is when you have um, the slave one on here and you're driving the slave one somewhere else, you don't want to stop abruptly because it the um, slave one will just collapse, and you don't want that. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to put your thoughts on the set and the video in the discussion page on my YouTube channel. Link will be in the description down below. Goodbye.